everybody and welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Laura and today I'm going to be sharing you the cultural do's and the cultural don'ts in Japan the Japanese culture is known to be very very different from practically all other cultures and I've uh, experienced that myself on many occasions so I thought it would be fun to, fun to share today with you uh, some funny little sketches or situations that you might find yourself in if you ever happen to come to Japan um, yeah so let's jump right in and before we start please um, give this video a big like and big thumbs up leave me a comment down below and also kindly consider subscribing because it really 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 supports my channel okay let's jump in our first do of the day is do make the bathroom wet this might seem really really funny <laughs> but you'll see what I mean in the next clip Without making anything wet. Hey, you. Psst. Yeah, you. Can you hear me? Hey. Hello. Finally, I have your attention. I wanted to tell you this is a wet bathroom. Oh, really? I didn't know that, but everything will get wet though. Well, you see, it's okay if everything gets wet. Japanese bathrooms are wet bathrooms? I've never heard of such a thing. Hmm? Well, in that case... Okay, so Japanese bathrooms are a little bit different from at least Belgian bathrooms or European bathrooms in the sense that there is a separation between the actual showering and bathing part and the part where you have like the sink and the mirror or like where you dry yourself off. Uh, so yeah, basically where in Europe you can't really um, make the entire bathroom wet like people will get angry at you in Japan it's no problem um, at least to make the entire uh, shower and bathroom area really really wet funny little anecdote my boyfriend Reem one time um, showered at my place in Belgium um, and I just told him oh you can take a bath no problem and yeah after taking a bath the entire bathroom floor and everything was wet and i hadn't seen it but my mom was like laura what did you do to the bathroom and she was actually really angry that the entire bathroom was so wet but she didn't know that Lin had taken the, the, a bath or a shower she thought i had done it so yeah Lin didn't know that you weren't supposed to shower or bathe in that way in belgium so that was kind of a really really funny situation back then Okay, so our first cultural don't here in Japan is don't blow your nose in public. Let's see what I mean with that. How was your work today? Hmm, was okay. Was it good? Yes. No tough stuff? Hmm, not really. Hmm, and how things are going? Well, it's getting better day by day. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Nice. I did so many Excel exercises, but I forgot most of them already actually right now. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? It's so dirty. What? I did blow it my nose. But you're not supposed to blow that loud. Oh, no. yeah. Loud? It's not loud though. Really? Can't blow my nose next to you? No, you can, but it's quietly. Quietly? Okay. <laughs> Okay, as you saw, it is kind of weird or um, not really well managed to blow your nose in front of uh, a lot of other people here in Japan or just people think it's really weird. In Belgium, it's not that much of a big, big of a deal. If you have a cold or you have to blow your nose, you blow your nose like it's it's what needs to happen there's nothing really to do about it while in japan people tend to more um like do this <laughs> like try to bring it up instead of bringing it out so you won't hear or see many japanese people um blowing their nose on a train outside even at home um but our family has become a little bit desensitized to it so in our family it's okay the next cultural do is to do lift your ball while eating. Let's see what I mean. I mean that's really bad. You're mean? supposed to hold your bowl 
to your mouth. That's manner. Really? Yes. Okay. We don't do that in Belgium. Yes, that's because your plate is flat. <laughs> okay. Japanese people generally tend to um, eat rice as their main source of carbohydrates during dinner and they always put it in a little bowl and then they take like other foods from um, other plates that are shared between family members um, so they have the habit of like taking that bowl and like eating the rice with chopsticks like this um, in other countries it might be a different habit but um, in Belgium we don't lift our bowls to our face generally maybe if it is a soup bowl then yes but otherwise no so um, even I still usually just leave my bowl on the gr on the table I don't even hold my bowl and then just like with a spoon actually I eat my rice always it's just the easiest for me um, but yeah it's really different as you can see culturally the second don't here in Japan is don't put your chopsticks in the rice Oh, I forgot my chop. No, my spoon. Wait a moment. <gasps> Who died? Why, why did you do this? What? What, what did I do? You're supposed to put your chapstick on like this. <gasps> it's for dead people. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> never do this. You will never, ever, ever, ever see someone doing what I just did here in Japan. Putting your chopsticks in um, a bowl of rice is um, signifying that you either want someone dead or someone died or something. Generally, um, there are um, little sticks of incense are put in a rice bowl during um, a funeral. So yeah, it's absolutely not done. So please don't do that when you come to Japan. Okay, so the third do is to um, do take your shoes off if you come inside a Japanese home or some buildings or restaurants. Let's see how that goes. Ta-da! Kaidi, please take off your shoes. Yes, of course. Oh, you actually know that. I'm surprised. Yeah, of course. My family always takes his shoes. I saw all fa like all foreigners then do that. In my family, we surely do. Okay, so um, this again depends on the country, but there are many countries uh, where you don't take your shoes off at home and many countries where you do take your shoes off. I think Belgium in general falls into the category, category where you do take your shoes off uh, although there's also families that don't take their shoes off in the home. At least my family always takes their shoes off. It has to happen. So um, in Japan, you usually have like a little um, place in the en entrance hall, which is lower than the actual ground where you take your shoes off and then you step into the home, either with slippers or on your socks or barefoot, whatever you like. Yeah, that's just something that is uh, done here. And I feel it's really, really strict. Even if you forget something inside the house, you won't just quickly run up with your shoes still on. That's absolutely not done here. While I would do that if I were in Belgium sometimes. Okay, and the third, don't is to not whistle at night. I am a really, really, really avid whistler. So let's see what happens if you do that here in Japan at night. What's this? What's happening suddenly? Why does the light turn off? Huh? Who's there? Mom? Dad? Me? What are you doing? So as you saw, um, in Japan there is this kind of superstition that if you whistle at night, um, either like a ghost or a snake or uh, a thief will come to you or like come rob you in uh the chinese cultural sphere like chinese china taiwan you have more to believe that a ghost will come and here in japan is more like a, a snake or um, a thief a thief will come uh, and get you um and yeah i just didn't know about that at all when i first came here so i whistled all the time at night even walking outside and i thought it was kind of normal and this is not something that everyone uh, pays much attention to but generally the older the generation the more they pay attention to it 
Okay, and then the last cultural do is to do wear a mask if you're feeling a little bit under the weather, if you're coughing, if you're sneezing. Um, yeah, generally, if you feel like your body condition is not 100%, wear a mask when you go out. Mm. <laughs> I'm coughing this much, but I actually really want to go to that cafe. Should I go? Should I not go? How what to do? I don't want to infect other people. <laughs> <sighs> but I'm actually also not feeling that sick. I'm just ha I'm having a bad cough. What to do? All... <sighs> you know what? Let's wear a mask and go out anyways. That way I won't infect any people. And I can go out anyways. Okay, so that were the um, seven cultural do's and cultural don'ts that I had prepared for you guys today. I hope you really, really liked it. And if you do, I have a lot more cultural do's and don'ts um, waiting to be filmed. So if you're interested in seeing a part two of this video, then definitely leave me a comment down below and leave me a like. Um, yeah, just as, just as I said, I hope you liked it. Please give me a big thumbs up and also kindly consider subscribing because it really, really, really supports my channel. Please click the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything new. And if you can, uh, you can support me also on Patreon. I have my Patreon page linked down below so you can check it out. There's lots of benefits um, of becoming one of my patrons. So I hope you um, take a look there as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.